I wanted to make a, uh, a comment and compliment one of my viewers, a fellow named Ken Rosh, or Rock. Ken, again, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Uh, Ken came on board um, in, and got very involved in the debate about uh, macronutrients and the cause of diabetes. Um, Ken has been a, uh, a plant-based, um, uh, low, I think low-fat uh, guy for a long time. Here's the thing, and here's what I appreciate. At the end of the day, uh, Ken, you've dropped some of the argument about what causes it, and you're beginning to do the right thing. You're saying, you know what? I may have a problem here. I'm going to go get, I'm going to get tested. I'm going to get a a, uh, a craft insulin survey. Uh, again, that's the issue. Uh, when, when UCLA says, look, over half of Californians have insulin resistance and almost half have diabetes, I would think that we would all start wanting to take a look because insulin resistance, I think, is the major cause of burning up our arteries and our tissues. So let's drop some of the debate about what caused it and start looking to see, as individuals, do I have this problem? I know I was surprised when I found mine. So um, again, good luck, Ken, as you go down this journey. Now, this uh, video is gonna be on something else. It's gonna be on something that we've known for decades. There's no argument in the literature that this causes insulin resistance and diabetes. Lack of sleep. Um, <clears throat> it's very difficult when you wake up early in the morning and you don't want to, uh, to lay in bed anymore. Uh, it's very difficult to, um, to get up sometimes, but then you force yourself to get up with an alarm clock. We have known we as a, a species, humans have known for a long time that there are associations between eating, eating too much and sleeping, sleeping too little or sleeping um, at the wrong time of day. We've known that there's a lot of problems associated with uh, lack of sleep. And I'm not gonna get into listing those problems here. In fact, what I'm gonna do is a, um, maybe overly uh, aggressive, um, overly um, maybe trying to cover too much, but try to cover it quickly. Uh, some science behind sleep and um, lack of sleep and the impact on metabolism. But before I do, a quick introduction, Dr. Ford Brewer, uh, PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention Center. Um, so, <clears throat> let's go look at some of the issues. How many people are sleeping appropriately? Uh, a third of us are getting less than five to six hours of sleep. So, a third of you listening to this are, getting enough, are not getting enough sleep. And if you're getting enough sleep, a third of your friends, families, co family, co-workers are not getting enough sleep. Um, <clears throat> You need to get seven and a half hours. There is a group, a genetic group, that uh, doesn't need that much. They do fine on like five hours. And if you think you're in that group, think about the probability. It's what, less than one in a thousand. So that's not a great bet. You probably need seven and a half hours of sleep. We've got a 24, uh, 24 hours a day, seven day a week economy. Uh, shift work is, uh, is a big deal. It's something that's just part of our business. But the WHO has, uh, has said, look, shift work is probably a cause of cancer. And uh, Denmark has actually even made shift work uh, and cancer, or cancer, do, cancer associated with shift work as workers' comp. I know that scares a lot of uh, benefits uh, managers. I used to do a lot of that, and that uh, just the impact and the thought of making shift, uh, making cancer for sh with shift workers, workers compensable, big, big deal. 
Um, <clears throat> so let's go over some, some high level stuff and then I'll go through an, an article. The article that I'm going to go through is, uh, a, it's an old one and it's not uh, complete, but here, but the point behind all that is over a decade ago, we knew about these problems with sleep and cancer, insulin resistance, diabetes, dying early, heart attack, stroke, dementia. I mean, we've known about this and yet we're still not doing a third of us are not getting enough sleep. Okay, so sleep and cancer. Um, we have always, we've known about increases in cancer from uh, lack of sleep, cancers of the prostate, breast, uterus, colon. Uh, Dr. David Gosell at the University of Chicago took mice and uh, inserted cancer cells, uh, de deprived uh, half of those mice of sleep, uh, he saw double the rate of uh, cancer progression and a huge increase in metastases. As you get deeper into the research, what you find out is that uh, you get decreases in killer T cells. And these killer T cells are named that, that way because they kill new cancer cells. You get a decrease in them and obviously there's not, you don't have those guys out to defend you and fight the new cancer cells. You get a decrease in M1 macrophages and increases in M2. Again, just very objective data, but also if you, when you learn a little bit more about these, you know that that will increase uh, cancer progression as well. And like I said a few minutes ago, the WHO has now even said shift work is probably a carcinogen. Again, amazing. So let's uh, drop um, sleep and cancer and look at sleep and hormones. Sleep is known to increase cortisol, uh, sympathetic uh, hormones and activities. And guess what impact that has on blood glucose? It can cause. And, and after a day of significant, one day of significant um, uh, sleep loss, you get uh, insulin resistance the next day. It's known to increase ghrelin. Ghrelin is the only hormone that we know so far that uh, causes hunger. It impacts growth hormone, decreases it. It impacts insulin, leptin, which is a, uh, an anti-hunger hormone or satiety hormone. It impacts uh, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone in females and testosterone in males. It's a significant, sleep loss is a significant cause of decrease in um, in men, of tes decrease in testosterone in men. And just to <clears throat> pardon the the uh, the blank for a minute there. I was thinking, should I mention the fact that sleep loss is a major cause of death on the highways? In fact, it's a few, it's a much bigger cost than uh, alcohol uh, and driving. I won't mention that um, <clears throat> because this is about sleep and metabolism. Just a couple of comments about what sleep is, uh, how you dissect sleep. You have REM and non-REM. REM stands for rapid eye movement. That tends to happen in the second half of sleep. That's when you're dreaming. Uh, dreaming is actually psychotic episodes that you have every night. But, I, but <clears throat> the evidence is that they help you work through the emotions of everyday li life and uh, maintain what you've learned without all the, the emotional baggage. In fact, REM sleep uh, has been positively associated with ther therapy for uh, post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome. The brain waves are like the uh, brain waves of awakening, but your body's paralyzed. So your mind's going through active psychotic episodes, but uh, you can't move. Uh, <clears throat> so NREM is non-rapid eye movement sleep. It's during the first half of uh, of sleeping. It's uh, slow waves, N1, N2, N3. Uh, it's what's originally called deep sleep. It has a major metabolic co component. You know, the, the neurons are actually surrounded by um, the neuro, neurolymphatic system and 
The neurons actually appear to shrink while the neurolymphatic system uh, increases. In other words, that deep sleep or in REM sleep appears to be a time when our brain gets cleans up, gets all the junk out of there. So <clears throat> we're going to go through some, again, rapid uh, uh, survey through uh, specific impacts. Uh, sleep and glucose metabolism. Insulin resistance in as little as one night of sleep loss. Uh, you saw that with Carter and, and Associates at the University of Chicago. Insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes from years of, uh, of a standing pattern of sleep less than seven hours. Now they did that through several studies. The Nurses Health Study, 70,000 participants. They asked these people about their sleep patterns for the past you know, few years, and there's a clear association between diabetes and sleep loss. Uh, a Swedish study of two, 2,000 men. So this is not just, uh, this is not a gender-related issue. Same thing. Uh, sympathetic uh, stimulation. There was, uh, <clears throat> it's a fight-or-flight thing. Again, cortisol is related to that, as well as uh, adrenaline or epinephrine. Um, cortisol peaks during REM sleep, three to five uh, in the morning. And again, that sort of correlates with the fact that uh, REM sleep or dreaming is a psychotic episode that we have every day. Um, diagram associated with some of the impacts on sleep deficiency, causing obesity, uh, being associated with sleep apnea. And again, you see there's a, a triangular impact there. Uh, sleep deficiency causing type 2 diabetes. Um, some, let's go to, uh, to some other studies and talk about sleep and weight. National uh, Health and Nutrition Sur Epidemiological Survey, NHANES, one of the standard epidemiological studies it is the standard epidemiological study for the country. It's been going on for decades. They see time and time again, increasing obesity with decreasing sleep duration. Um, obesity is being seen in children with uh, decreased sleep duration. Obesity in older adults and obesity in young adults. It's not an age, age related issue at all. No matter what age you are, if you're not sleeping enough, you're going to uh, have problems with weight, or it's going to increase your probability of obesity. Um, here's some of the the um, older adult self surveys. Look up if you want to look it up. It's called Cardia, C A R D I A. Um, <clears throat> so here's a class, a picture of the classic idea of somebody with sleep loss and obstructive sleep apnea. You got a machine here, and again, this is part of the reason why uh, CPAP has had so many problems being uh, received. Can you imagine trying to sleep with that on your face? I've had family members who tried it. So we, they had huge problems with sleep. Got amazing relief for, with CPAP the first day, but then quit using it within a week because that's difficult. Another comment around this, again, you see the obesity here. That's the classic picture that we see. And. I wish I could, but classic hasn't set that up with me. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> what we see here is obesity and its relation to obstructive sleep apnea. So you begin to get the idea that this goes both ways. Obesity causes. Uh, Obstructive sleep apnea, one of the major causes because of obstruction of your ability to breathe while you're asleep. Meanwhile, lack of sleep causes obesity. So you start getting in a major uh, catch-22. <clears throat> another couple of brief comments about sleep and metabolism uh, associated with apnea. Uh, OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, uh, causes insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes in addition to cancer, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, mixed results with treatment. Again, poor compliance due to the uh, 
difficulty sleeping with a mask on. So if you're saying, well, you know what? I'm not obese. I don't have sleep apnea. I don't have a problem. Uh, if you're getting less than seven hours, seven and a half hours of sleep a night, like a third of us, yes, you can get into problems. And again, it's problems that uh, we discussed earlier. This is, I mentioned earlier that I was going to be uh, looking at uh, a survey article. This is a fairly good one. Uh, it's from the uh, International Journal of Endocrinology. The uh, authors are Sharma and Kavuru, and uh, they're from Greenville, uh, the School of Medicine in Greenville, North Carolina. Um, my point behind this article is, again, this was over a decade ago. They looked through the literature and they saw multiple places where sleep impacts our, our, our metabolism dramatically. It decreases good hormones, increases uh, bad hormones, or hormones that can cause problems. Um, it's associated with cancer, uh, obesity, <clears throat> and yet again, third of us are not getting enough sleep. 